Today we're talking about Elastic Cloud on Kubernetes. Now, if you were here for the last video, you'd have seen us deploy Elastic Fluentbit in Kibana as standalone instances or standalone components. Fluentbit was installed or deployed as a daemon set, Kibana as a single instance of a deployment, and Elastic Search as a stateful set. Today, we're going to be leveraging Elastic's ECK, which effectively is a number of different CRDs. Now, what's a CRD? I hear you ask. A CRD is a custom resource driver. It's Kubernetes offering to extend your APIs further, not just utilizing their out-of-the-box objects, but you to actually be able to create your own custom objects, decide how they interact with your the rest of your appliances or the rest of your applications and you just as you would utilizing object oriented programming you can create a framework or a constructor and instantiate those constructors as and how you please now going straight into it i've created a nice repo which you could effectively fork under home lab security elastic ECK, you'll be able to find the readme file along with its respective manifest files. Now, if you're new around here, my name's Saeed. I'm a security engineer working at Google, a Kubestronaut, and I like to talk about all things security and Kubernetes related. Ideally, securing things on Kubernetes. If you like the sound of that, stick around, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to find me on other platforms, I am quite active on LinkedIn. All the descriptions down below. Now, without further ado, I've already uh, cloned the repo. I've already installed or added the Helm repos. It's just time to install those charts. So let's crack on. Let's do that. <clears throat> the namespace has already been created. So if we hit that, we'll be able to see the operator in action. Lovely. The manifest files are in the repo, as I mentioned. So we can go ahead and create. Actually, before we do that, let's take a quick look at the manifest files. What is in there? So the kind is Elasticsearch. Again, if you'd tinkered around with Kubernetes, you'd know that that isn't your, uh, you know, typical type of object within Kubernetes out of the box anyway. That's because we're leveraging the CRD. So let's go ahead and apply that hyphen F elastic. And we don't need to specify a namespace because we've already done that within the manifest file. Cool. And if we look at the Kibana, <coughs> you'll see something similar, except the notable point here is the elastic search reference. Look how easy it is to integrate your Kibana to your elastic search directly through two parameters. Elasticsearch ref and the reference of the actual Elasticsearch. And you can actually tamper with it a bit more. I'll leave the description of the docs down below. Super, super handy. So we do the same thing here for our Kibana manifest. We just apply that directly. Nice and easy. kubectl get all. And you'd assume that it would just create the pod or the stateful set or the respective deployment, we're going to actually be in for a bit of a surprise here. Because when we see what actually happens when you create that from that one manifest file, it's max 10 lines, you see a number of different resources. You've got a number of different services for the way in which you can integrate uh, or you can integrate applications into your Elasticsearch uh, stack. You've got your deployment, you've got your stateful sets, and your pods not to mention your secrets. Interesting, a number of different secrets. Why do we have so many secrets? Because these secrets, they serve different purposes. Again, you've got CA certs for your internal services. You've got certs for your public services, the external services. And again, you could utilize this as and how you please. <clears throat> In our case, we'll be utilizing a few of those and I'll show you the ones we'll be using. Kubectl get secrets 
first things first, we need the username and password for, oh, the password for the Elastic Search Data Storage. Uh, we could just grab Elastic here. There we go, that's the one that we're looking for. We specifically need the password for that because <clears throat> that's what we'll use to populate our Fluent Bit agent for when it's passing logs to Elasticsearch. So let's base64 decode that, echo. And for those of you who think base64 decoding is secure, then you're very wrong. Certainly isn't secure. Be sure to have encryption set up at rest and in transit. So that's what we've got there. We're just going to quickly confirm the service of the Elasticsearch. Oh, grep, of course. So it's load balancer. IP address is 192.168.3.162. So we're going to go over to our Fluent Bit values file. We're going to actually deploy Fluent Bit as we did the time we recorded the last video. And that is as a Helm chart. Right. And that's obviously going to be a, you know, demon set. So. <clears throat> Here we are. So we're going to just quickly remove that old password and just paste the new one. The IP address correlates with the current IP address. So we're good with the IP. That's the load balancer IP of the Elasticsearch service. And everything else looks good. Just so we're sure. Yep, the password looks fine. So now I'm going to go off and I'm going to deploy that Fluent Bit daemon set. Now I know it's going to complain. Why is it going to complain? Because we've referenced TLS certs, but we haven't actually mounted the volume to the secret or the secret to the volume within the pod. So we're expecting some errors within the actual pod, but we'll go ahead and we'll fix that. Kubectl get pods in that observer namespace error. Let's let's watch it a little bit. Let's watch it error out a little bit. One more error and we'll go into it. I'll show you what the error is and then we'll go with them. We'll we'll fix that. <clears throat> it's crash back loop. It's going to stay in, which is cool. So kubectl logs of that actual pod in that actual namespace. And that's complaining about the TLS certs that it can't find within its daemon set. So kubectl edit that daemon set in the observer namespace fluent bit. So we're going to go straight into the volume mounts. We know where we're going to go. So mount path to fluent hyphen bit, hyphen TLS, which is the location in which it's looking for those certs. So we're going to make sure we mount it to that right location. We're going to give that a name so we can reference it for our volume. Here we are. And straight to the volume, we're going to give it the name of to match that mount path, TLS certs, making sure that those two names align. And it is not of any other type, but secret. Secret name is quick start hyphen es hyphen es hyphen http hyphen certs hyphen public. Right. I'm happy with that. As long as it's happy with it. Lovely. We're going to validate that that is the name of the secret. Get secrets hyphen an observer, quick start, hyphen es, hyphen es, hyphen http, hyphen certs, hyphen public. Lovely. That's exactly what we're looking for. So kubectl get pods in that observer namespace. And that has already restarted. That service has restarted. Incredible. <clears throat> so if we cut the fluent bit YAML or the values file, and we grep 
for the password. We're going to need that. So I'm going to go off and copy that. Lovely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off into the Elastic Search pod. We're going to query it. We're going to see if all has worked out well. So let's find that namespace into that quick start elastic search hyphen hyphen bash now that we're in co hyphen k https localhost because it's 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 within itself of course or we are within it over cat we're looking for the indices And we're going to pass the username and password. Oh, need to make sure that we have the quotations in order. There we go. So we've got a number of different indices, specifically looking for our one indice or index. <laughs> my, my English apologies about that. So now that we've got that, just going to go off and get that in there straight in there slash underscore search lovely payload beautiful let's just make that look a bit more neater you can hit question mark pretty equals true wow it's beautiful isn't it when it works out <laughs> so we can see here the index is log stash with today's date got id got a source got timestamps which is only two minutes ago or a minute and a half ago we've got logs right just complaining about failing to flush a chunk retries right so we've got kubernetes the namespaces observer right the container names fluent bit you can see the checksum for that you can see the host right it's the node so on and so forth so you've got a number of different docs as you call it within Elasticsearch or documents, which is the type of logs that we're looking to pick up. And there you have it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's far more simpler with far more features and a much more extendable um, arm as opposed to deploying Elastic as their standalone components. So that's been Elastic Cloud on Kubernetes in short. If you enjoyed that, be sure to check out my previous videos. And if you do like it, then, or if you don't like it, actually, you can also share your feedback. But yeah, till next time.